Okay then, so let's jump right now into the game. It's going to be from yesterday. Let's play yesterday in the evening. And, well, according to the information and some confirmations and whatever, this actually is supposed to be the real Magyar. Coming back for a few games. From what we have kind of seen, there's a topic at RTS Sanctuary about it. It's not like that he's going to be, I don't know, grinding or whatever. Just maybe having some fun games here and there. But nonetheless, this is his account apparently from 2009. And we'll see therefore, maybe he has been secretly practicing what kind of game style and gameplay he's gonna be able to provide. And it's also interesting that he's beginning with Loki out of all civilizations. Because obviously he was, I mean, like he could be playing other civilizations, but he was mostly Egyptian main. But yeah, well, again, he just kind of yeah. knew how to play the others quite well. I do seem to be remembering him with Greeks, with some good Zeus as well, if I'm not mistaken, but whatever the case, we are going to be there for starting with pretty funny wood line here, as the map is going to be there for, that's water in hole, right? Yes, it is. And he's going to be playing coincidentally against the Ege, against Ra, so that might be somewhat of a actually funny situation. It's overall going to be, no, Magyar and then 1600 game, pa Pantera Bro is having about like, no, before the game was even like 1600, if I saw it correctly, after the game he was even 15.30. So we'll see what's gonna be the performance here. Probably gonna be expecting Pantera Bro maybe to attempt some classic to PC fast, the heroic, possibly. We have to wait and see. Good gold for him, but not like it's gonna be too much of a problem, of course, from Dra. As Pantera Bro on the other side, he is going to be currently having in his base quite a turbo safe gold. That's a quite nice beginning for him. Can say it now, good food, and interestingly, of course, starting right now on the gazelles here to the top, easy to wall off possibly, and keep his base safe. But let's turn off the fog of form so that we are having some better idea about the full map. It's not a hard one to work with for Pantera, bro. Not too hard to potentially put up some walls and really keep his base a bit safer. Can see not a really terrible hunt here, and you can see Magyar already has been scouting quite a bit and thoroughly. Hmm. Immediately going into actually, that's an interesting style of scouting by the way. Completely ignored any scouting around his base as far as the food. Like completely. And just like straight beelined to the other side so that he can be seeing what potentially and where the opponent is going to be. Or where is he gonna be having the TC. On the other hand, he just then ran back so I'm not entirely certain if he maybe changed his mind because if he will be trying to find like the surroundings of the enemy, then not sure if he actually did enough. On one hand, you could be thinking he doesn't need to be scouting the bottom because he has scouted the top. There's no TC here, so therefore he knows there's a TC to the bottom, right? So something like that could be actually making sense. But uh, I don't know. If he's not entirely familiar with the spawns of the maps, which based on, again, what has been posted, he probably isn't currently. He's not entirely too familiar with the balance pitches and whatever. Then I don't know, maybe... Maybe he would be having to share what was the general logic beyond the game and beyond the scouting here in the early stages. But nonetheless, you'll see, he's gonna be getting slowly ready for the advance with another you know, housey randomly. Oh, randomly, next to hand that's not random. I wonder if the temple will be in base, or maybe he's gonna be trying to right now somewhat keep some presence a bit more into the midst of the map. Okay, so where do we go? Doesn't have it. Oh, he actually does have a temple already. Ah, well, <laughs> he already has dropped one. I was gonna assume that it's gonna be a house in there as well, but nope. He already does have a fourth one, which is kind of nice. He's advancing for Sade. If he wanted to rush, then obviously Heimdall would be making a lot more sense to insta-kill tower and possibly some wall in, in place as well. No, but not gonna be the case. He obviously is gonna be scouting first that, but he's still gonna be missing the extra TC. Yeah, it's gonna be making sense to be just knowing what's going on. This is something that you don't necessarily see that often. This is a bit more old schooly play, having the houses next to the town centers and such. Yeah. In today's game, kind of people are more kind of knowing what's going on, and therefore they don't entirely need to be scouting that thoroughly, because they kind of know what to expect usually. And in such a matchup, barely anybody would be going into the front TC, so that's not much of a point in actually trying to even scout it in the first place. So yeah, it, it just kind of depends how much experience you have with the current meta, I guess. 
No, and is he gonna be there for finally having enough information about uh, Down Center? So far not, but he should be at this point probably realizing that it will be somewhere nearby here at the back. And Infinity V0, thank you for the follow. You know, the random house, and this is actually, you could be thinking at the random houses, that it's not making too much of a sense, but it actually in the end does. Because it's gonna be at this point a bit harder to pull all of them down at once. And it will be meaning that he's gonna be somewhat protected from what we sometimes see when you have like, I don't know, five, six houses at one place and you suddenly lose that position on the map and you're gonna be completely screwed as the Norse because you are gonna be missing all your population limits suddenly. Yeah, it should be the real one, Ropel Tirano. Should be the real one, apparently. Played the game yesterday. Not sure if he has played anything after, but at least not on leather, it looks like. Uh, otherwise, just like don't get anybody. It has been posted somewhat fantastically and whatnot, but don't get your hopes up. He's just gonna be playing some games here and there for fun. He kind of said he's gonna be playing probably retail, but nonetheless, currently, obviously, it's not always interest too much. Still gonna be focusing probably on League of Legends or some such. So, kind of ignore all the nonsense. Is that that he's returning or whatever? No, he's not. He's just gonna be playing a game here and there. Not returning anywhere, at least not yet, as I mentioned. Uh, but nonetheless, you can say right now this is gonna be a bit actually interesting play by Pantera boss so, so far that he actually hasn't found his way into the second TC. You can see he's gonna be trying to get one TC faster heroic with a Ra without even rain. That's an interesting build. But unfortunately for him, Magyar going for the forward build is gonna be disappointing him quite a bit immediately. And it's kind of cool to see that Magyar is just going to be immediately going for early action and into the strength of the god instead of just like trying to play according to maybe some standard um, expectations. Very well done. Get to be seeing some classic micro at the beginning here from him. And of course at this point he's going to be trying to block the second settlement. At this point he probably could be assuming that the opponent will be going for the faster heroic it's obviously a bit hard to assume that because again we must be not forgetting that pantera bro is about like 1600 player here so while he obviously knows what he's doing it's not going to be as you're playing for example with 80 1900 player right then you could be expecting all kinds of other things right now it's just like a bit more up in the air what's going to happen so any kind of assumptions are slightly dangerous from Magyar. That's a actually interesting right now, Longhouse here in the corner. Wait, what? Oh, that's a random lumber camp, but nonetheless, uh, interesting right now. Armory not, but the Longhouse so far away is curious. Is he trying to con block already ahead? Practically the trade? Maybe that could be some level of thought actually on his side. Fortunately, we can see that Pantera Bro can be probably forgetting about Hero Cage based on his resources for the time being. No, and Magyar. Tons of upgrade, all oh, tons of upgrades, long houses, and of course there we go. No auto queues for him, as he needed to be getting into the next Age. There's the Bragi right now jumping up. Uh, he's not playing today. This is a replay from yesterday. He was playing like one game. I'm really thinking it was one game. Kind of saw it, saw the account live as well. So I was wondering about that, but no, the Lich should be winning here. Yes, he will. Classic power of the villages in Age of Mythology. Girl of Hippolyta, not a game changer. And the second relic is gonna be Ankofra. So basically, none of them are gonna be too extremely important. With Pantera Bro ready for at least a bit of farming. Unfortunately, no husbandry, no plow. That's a much more important currently omission for him. But at least he's quite nicely ready with some Axemen. Probably could be using maybe even a second uh, barracks, by the way. He seems to be maybe playing it a bit too... No, I don't think like confident, but maybe like unsafe. With plenty of walls coming up, basically he's trying to compartmentalize Pantera Bros game so that he's not gonna be able to go anywhere. So the TC can forget about that one. All the way to the bottom is at least slightly scouted by Magyar. And he actually did finish the longhouse. Huh. If you remember, that was actually a path blocker for some of the villagers. I do wonder if we can like forgot to cancel it because I don't think it's making that much of a sense here. It's, it's way too close to the base and therefore exactly kind of open to this nonsense. So not sure if it was fully on purpose, but in the end, 
probably won't be mattering too much. You can see how this is ready. And economically, some upgrades. I'll be expecting it's gonna be a bit on the lower side. Kind of standard. Kind of buggy. I usually actually like to be playing that way. Okay, like I remember some games that he played that way that he didn't entirely put too much stock into even, for example, military upgrades because he put a lot of stock into his own ability to micro <laughs> and not make mistakes. And at that point, if you don't make mistakes, you really don't need any kind of economy, do you? <laughs> so it kind of is all about your self-confidence, how you want to play. Obviously, it's a bit dangerous to be having such self-confidence if you are going to be a 1600 player, for example. There you could be probably wanting to have some backup of economy to make more units. If you're gonna be taking a not okay, less than an ideal fight. But in the end here, maybe it could be working somewhat and somehow. But really at this point just like completely controlled Pantreabro all around. He just basically doesn't have anywhere to go without Magyar no win. And that's gonna be just immediate hell. 79. And he's even actually going into dock. Wow. Okay. Now this one is a bit curious what he wants to be doing with it. Is he making actually a transport boat for himself so that the harassers do not get blocked here? <laughs> if so, then that's actually kind of next level. And that's some kind of... That reminds me, that's actually something that somebody did in a game about... It's kind of maybe two years ago already. I unfortunately don't remember which game whatsoever, but I do remember somebody being a troll like that. That they actually made a funny transport to actually save units from such a predicament. Oh yeah, sometimes you're gonna be seeing people doing all kinds of funny things. Let me see if he's getting some upgrade here. Of course not. I wouldn't be surprised if he actually didn't even bother rebuilding the armory too much. But frankly, considering right now already the army from Pantera, bro, he might be wanting to do at least a bit about it. Flamey weapons are gonna be all nice and cool. Mm, but throwing axe man maybe could be enough. Maybe actually I'm gonna be taking that back. <coughs> Really kind of nice to be seen the methodical approach, right? Kind of seen that through through the whole process of the game. He was kind of like definitely going step by step and it all made pretty decent sense actually what he was doing. So I'm kind of looking forward if maybe he's going to be really getting some potentially more practice. If he could be somewhat actually teaching players to do something along those lines because he's going to be also having a bit, bit more of a new perspective, frankly. Most of the top players today, they play well, but they are kind of locked in a certain way of playing that is kind of common in the community. And if you're going to be having some somewhat of an outsider with a bit of a different skill set, because from League of Legends, you're going to be having especially kind of like really the confidence in micro in your units and therefore just like a different approach into how you're going to be taking the fights even and which ones you're going to be taking in the first place. It might be interesting, somewhat like an inspiration for the players. To kind of see and i'm really curious once potentially somebody snipes him some good player how is it gonna be shaping up after but nido coming forward immediately here uh special attack i mean like oh special attack simply first attack could have been going pretty well into the axemen in there unfortunately they already spread out so this could have been timing a bit better or timed a bit better and of course with the flame weapons on top of it that will be complete destruction of panthera bro currently and as well all the way to the top you're gonna be or Magyar is gonna be seeing that there's an army on the other side of the map, but currently, yeah, he's not gonna be taking the TC down because he doesn't currently realize that Nidhogg is actually really good at destroying buildings. So this is kind of like a lack of practice slightly here, showing for a bit. Yeah, this this would have been a spot where to send the Nidhogg in. 40 crash damage is major. He'll be killing the TC almost instantaneously. No, and the top army gonna be where actually? Huh. Pantera bro not trying to take the fight against flame weapons, of course, I'm all about that. You can see right now he's unfortunately housed Magyar currently. <laughs> Way too consumed by trying to fight in the front. Way too consumed by that, it seems like. As you can see right now, economical upgrades, pickaxe and plow. And we do a very actually soonish ballista. Well, well, well. That's also something that current locusts wouldn't be doing that quickly. Usually Ballista would be coming only when you kind of can't be killing the opponent with the myth units. That's usually where the siege weapons come in. <laughs> but yeah, with the TC down. And of course, I mean like he's not entirely too much caring about this getting destroyed. He can just kind of build a new temple, I guess, Magyar to the right. But can he actually? Good spawn. No, now we can. But the resources are quite a bit drained and strained for him. Yeah, unfortunately, of course, right now cannot be even getting 
some further fire giants into the fight. He's having plenty gold and favor, so it would be absolutely excellent for him to do. As I want to be just checking some villager upgrades. At least the hand axe, but obviously now he will be also liking to get plow. I can see some Aide Billy Geros here and there. Random units that are not fighting, and tons of villagers with two ox cars on each side. Nice! How many people would be doing that, right? <laughs> Usually the Norse are gonna be having one ox card, or then you have the extremities of having about like five of them, then you're gonna be having all kinds of villager groups converging, if you're gonna be in a tough situation. But yeah, this was pretty nice execution of Loki by Magyar. Not entirely really certain how much of a practice or anything else he was having before, and how often he played, even maybe for fun or whatnot. Probably not too much, I would be expecting. But this was pretty solid. Again, it was against a 1600 player. So we, of course, need to be right now taking that into account. But that still means, after potentially years and years of not playing, that that's actually a fairly nice opening. A 1600 player does reasonably know what he's doing. You could have seen right now here. Bit of a challenge, maybe Pantera Bro was expecting again the early attack anyway, and that's why he didn't want to be getting the second TC that early against the Loki, tough to say. But yeah, looking forward to some further games. You can see right now, actually, we have <laughs> all three giants here. Well, that's kind of rare. Mountain, Frost, and Fire. Nidhogg on top of it here, still surviving. But not sure what this was about. That's having me a bit actually up in the air what was the idea. The only thing I can think of is that maybe he was trying to save those two Hercers, but then figure out he doesn't have to do that all that much. But yeah, kind of cool to be seeing this old score back and in apparently quite a bit of a killing mode. And of course those ballets stayed this early. That was not entirely something that you're going to be seeing regularly with Locust today. Yeah, if he really hasn't played, this was a bit of an interesting one, and kind of like a bit of a hard... It's harder usually to be playing, of course, the aggressive gods, because they are a bit more reliant on game knowledge and being experienced, and of course ready for the fight. So I think he played pretty well. I really kind of enjoyed how he went in. Oh, Nidhogg actually, he has been just now killed. Ah, I was kind of thinking I don't see his health bar at all. He was already right now ready to be falling down from the sky. I've yeah. seen the message. Kind of like what he was going in for the scouting there, all the houses everywhere. It was pretty cool. Pretty cool indeed. I liked, of course, the blocking of the path in. You can definitely see that the micro was somewhat there. And I'm really hoping that if he starts playing again a bit more, he can really kind of play and bring in the League of Legends micro and maybe finally have somebody who's gonna be properly using the myth units recharges and their special powers because not many people manage them too well no no practically nobody manages them too well just like more random to be honest how people use them so i'm thinking there is still plenty room to improve in how the game can be executed and played out Norse players these days prefer go 2TC in this map against a game I guess still have the old Norse mentality of being aggressive 1TC. No, yeah, well, exactly. Yeah, that was kind of seen here, that he's in the old mentality. Really, it's kind of forward build, the houses everywhere. That, that's old school play. That's not something you're going to be seeing today. That's rarely the case. Loki Macro, for example, is going to be the lone player who does forward builds <laughs> without with impunity. Others are just, if they want to be flexing, maybe. But yeah, now most people will be, if there's gonna be a kind of like a defensive god with Echo, like Ra, most people are gonna be trying to match it, really just the game has slowed down massively. And there is a really room for this kind of style of play, it can work. If you're gonna be advancing quickly enough at about 4 minutes, you can usually disrupt the second TC, especially with somebody like Loki who's gonna be having the early Hercers. So there are some chances on that. Can't say it about now. Pickaxe and plow here. Arguably, Matrius is the best MU user since he's the guy that knows how to play with Nemean Lions and he's in Semit Chimera. Yeah, he's actually, he does like to be using the myth units. Yeah, it kind of tends also to be stemming from that. How often you use them and 
how well you're gonna be there for controlling them as well. And Hamdi, this is from yesterday. A real one. So we'll see how many games he's gonna be playing. You can watch for yourself. So this is the game. So if you want to be having a quick look. And there is right now. Okay. <laughs> As Eric, who is right now, or has been, kind of like a bit of a part of the Magyar comeback joke, <laughs> wants to be apparently led back into the chat. Hopefully, he's gonna be behaving properly. Otherwise, he can rejoin that. Okay, so it's gonna be having something to say, same as right now. We are going to be there for having a look into some of the pieces of the economy here. Obviously, Magyar at this point is gonna be in a quite a bit high level. First, stronger economy for Norse, and he didn't entirely allow Pantera Bro to be doing too many things. You can see same ish military count, but of course, the power is gonna be completely different. Flame weapons on top of it, so resulting into this kind of ratio. 24, 25, 64, 65. Uh, that's a bit interesting again, the disparity here. So you're gonna be losing one more unit, each of them, than they have actually killed. Uh I probably wasn't a delete on the on the dragon, I'm thinking. But there probably was some kind of delete on a unit or whatnot. Because otherwise it doesn't make too much of a sense here. Or maybe some animal kill could have been in, possibly. No, yeah, well, definitely. I mean, like, Pantera Bro was having the second TC for just a bit. Magyar wasn't... And was he even actually still auto queue? No, he... He actually... Wait a second. Yeah, we probably can't be seen if there is an auto queue now, but it's maybe kind of likely, I guess. That you will be having it. I'm liking really the positive... <laughs> just, again, looking at the houses. You just have to understand in what kind of smart positions he's actually put in the houses. It's not only like random scouting. You can see the purposeful positioning. The hell they just fly in. Well, that's a big bug, but nonetheless, what is not a bug is the house. You can see it now, of course, classic position to be going back into the base and into his base rather. So if somebody is going to be trying to sneak in, he's going to be having a good chance to see it. He's putting it to the left, in my opinion, because he's expecting the TC to be under his control. Whereas all the way to the top side, you can see that's going to be the market, which might be thinking some random position, but it's also not going to be. Could have just built it with any kind of unit, other unit elsewhere. But he's going to be also keeping control of possible access route or escape routes or whatever, simply. So he's just kind of pretty smart where he's positioned all of it, all the way to the top side house was here as well. Again, same position as the previous ones, right? And then he was, of course, keeping control of this choke point. Smart hill fort beyond the wood line, so therefore impossible to get there with siege towers, for example, or any kind of units whatsoever, utilizing also the ground pretty well. And what the map spawned. I mean, like, there's just so many cool things here that might not be that evident, but it's also that you need to be thinking about this being his first game, supposedly. So it just kind of like shows you how he thinks about the game. It's like, kind of like the best ones to know the first ones, how the player thinks of it, instead of being kind of like the victim of the meta when he already plays way too many games and he does things somewhat automatically. Again, I kind of, if he was and if he is going to be playing a bit more, I think there could be a lot of things that other players can learn. Maybe gonna be seeing some development of the, of the meta, who knows? The possibilities are endless. Okay, so congratulations to Magyar on his win in the first game. No, I guess maybe congr congratulations to Pantera Bro as well for being the first one to have the experience with him as well. It's probably gonna be kind of maybe one of his recorded games he's gonna be keeping for his children. <laughs> who knows how much of a fanboy he is or not. <laughs> GG. Okay, so that was that fun game that I wanted to show, he, show here that he played yesterday. 
again, he's just gonna, from what I know, he just gonna said he's gonna be maybe doing some games here and there, so it's not like he's come back, coming back or whatever. Don't expect anything huge. But maybe there's gonna be some fun stuff going on here and there. So yeah, if you're gonna be interested in playing in playing with him, then <laughs> look forward in some evenings GMT probably to try and snipe him.